What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. So, last episode, we ended up making an ocean full of Mirian. Yeah, and then we started converting it all into ingots. Um, I was just logging in, and I looked at this thing, and it looks absolutely ridiculous. We made the smeltery super, super big, <laughs> so we could melt down a whole bunch of material and alloy that into the Mirian so we could make that dim lid. But yeah, I was just looking at that, I was like, what the heck? That looks so silly. Anyway, um, so yeah, last episode we started converting the fluid, the molten Mirian, into ingots. And I actually left the local server that I have running, I think, pretty much for 24 hours. Um, I wasn't intending to leave it run that long. I had actually forgot that I had it running. So we're up to 260,000 ingots. We need to convert these into blocks of Mirian. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that we're going to have to look at doing. Uh, so we saw that we can make that using the factorizer, right? And I know the factorizer can be affected by tick acceleration. So pretty much we're going to want to make, I think, a couple of factorizers. Probably provide those factorizers with the Mirian uh, through applied energistics. Get that all tick accelerated and see if we can start dumping that into a quantum compressor. Now, the whole purpose of us doing this is we need to get ourselves 9001 uh blocks of Mirian per singularity and we actually need two of these in order for us to make this wand of animation so we have everything ready to go here except for these two particular items those are the only things that are holding us back and once we make this wand of animation we should be able to animate literally any solid block not like a furnace or any tile entity like that any solid block so like one Mirian block we can animate it that we can capture it and then we can spawn it in like a monster and kill it. And then it'll always drop the item uh, that it is made out of. So this is going to help us out significantly in the future for other materials that are really hard to make. Like this crystal teen stuff, for instance. That's why we have nine of those in our inventory waiting for this wand of animation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So we made a quantum compressor. Um, in order for us to make that singularity, we do need an ultimate catalyst. Ultimate catalyst. Let's get this thing cooking up here. This will take a minute. And I can't remember. Do I need to do something down here? No. I think that... Okay. Yeah, I think this is what I'm trying to make the black iron ingots. And we already had some of those made. Uh, anyway, so we have that. We have this. We need to get ourselves some of the factorizers. Uh, these aren't super difficult to make. Unfortunately, they don't have EMC, but everything they're made out of does have EMC. So I'm just going to go ahead and make, I don't know, four of those. We'll be right back. All right. So I got a bunch of things in my inventory ready to go. And I think we're going to place where our applied energistics cabling goes right here. Now just poke down and it looks like we have applied energistics cabling right here. In fact, I might move this back one block just to make this. A nicer, straighter line with the AE cabling. Now, here's the thing. We're going to be using, I think, four interfaces, which means we need four channels. This has four channels remaining on this, um, I guess, regular ME glass key bowl. I think we should have enough channels for everything that we need to do here. But, yeah, that is something to keep in mind when you are taking channels off an existing key bowl to make sure you have <laughs> enough channels ready to go. But, yeah, four of eight, and we only need... Uh, four channels, so I think we should be okay here. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna bring the cable up like this, and that should be just fine. So, uh, quantum compressor, this needs to be set somewhere. I think we'll just place it right here, covering that hole. And then, the way I think we're gonna do this is we're gonna do a translocator here with a chest on top. I could place that in my inventory. And then we're going to place the other translocator with glowstone all pumping into here, which is going to need the ultimate catalyst and power. We'll get the power here in a minute. Uh, so everything, all the blocks that we want are going to be going into this chest. So the way I want to do that is I want to have factorizers all around here, like so. And each one of these, we're just going to do a shift right click on the center thing. We are going to insert from the sides and then we're going to export to the back, right? So we're going to be putting ingots in here. It's going to be combining them and then exporting automatically auto output enabled. Yeah, automatically putting those items into this chest here. 
So we just need to make sure, whoop, not that. We need to make sure that we set these all up exactly the same way. Um, thermal expansion does have a thing called red, what's it called? Red something, let me look at this. Thermal red, red print? Yeah, red print. So you can copy the setting on one machine and then paste on the other ones if you're doing like a large amount of machines, but this only takes a couple seconds. And I don't think we have a red print set up already, so it's just easy enough to make a few setting changes like that. Anyway, so we will do this, this, and this. Actually, all these machines, we wanna have auto input. Yeah, I think that should be fine. So auto input looks at adjacent blocks that have inventories and tries to import items. So the way we wanna have this set up is we wanna have the Mirian uh, being, whoop, where'd that just go? <laughs> oh, that went into the machine here, dang it. <laughs> it's doing what I needed to do, but not when I wanted to do it. So we need to have these here. We wanna make sure all of these slots are filled. Now you can just have it providing one and it'll always have that available. But when you start tick accelerating these machines, it will start pulling multiple stacks at a time, right? So you wanna make sure you have all of these available. That way it has a chance of pulling 18 in the same exact tick if this machine is the one that's being tick accelerated, right? So you get the most amount of ingots being pulled at once. Okay, so I think that should be all set. Um, this chest in the center doesn't have anything because that has all gone down into here. And, you know, it looks like, oh, you know what? I think the power is only used when it's taking the 9001 and then doing this process. Yeah, it'll automatically just put them in here. So I guess we can get this started before we even give this machine power. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, so now that we have that, we need to make sure we get the applied energistics hooked up here. So all of these things will start providing the items like so and then we should see this working here yeah it looks like this machine is now doing something we see uh Marion going in here not very fast but it is going in there right we have not started tick accelerating this so once we do that i think this is going to speed up quite significantly all right so that's this is our complete setup here aha uh -huh. so let's grab um Where's, I guess we'll grab this one, except I don't have one here. Yeah, that's the problem with these ritual anchors. I keep like moving them around. I never know where one is. <laughs> they do have EMC, so I can always make a bunch of them. And then I forget the name of them and this and that. Anyway, so we're going to place this here. That'll still allow us to open that chest. And then we need to grab the thing from over here. And it looks like we're still connected to another machine. That must be over here at the smeltery, huh? Because that's the last thing I remember tick accelerating. Yeah, this one. All right. Well, we don't need that over at the smeltery. I'm going to put that back here so I don't lose it again. <laughs> and then uh, we just need to grab this guy. Right click that one. And then throw it over here on our factorizers. Let's make it nighttime as well so it goes a lot faster. Okay. And then we'll do this. And hopefully, if this all starts working correctly, we should start seeing a bunch of blocks going in all at once. Yeah, that looks like that's working real well. Okay, so we're up to 800 already. Can we see, like, is this chest really filling up by a lot? 10, 14, 14, 26. It's going okay. So at this speed, we should be done in about five minutes-ish. Maybe maybe 10 minutes? We, we need two of these. Uh, we also need to give this power. So let's grab a quantum entangle porter, which we don't have on us, but we can EMC for. Quantum entangle porter. All right, we'll just put this right next to this guy. And we need to do the site config for energy. We want this all on output, auto eject on. And then we want to set it to this channel. And this should now have full power, which it does. Perfect. So once this thing reaches 9,001, it'll start processing and making our singularity while it's collecting the one, or I guess the amount that we need for the next one. Mm -hmm. And then we should be pretty much good to go. All right, so we are approaching the second 9,001 mark here, and that's the last one that we are gonna need to make. 
So once this thing finishes up, we should be good to go. Now I did go ahead and I just reset it to nighttime. It took just ever so slightly longer. The sun was starting to rise just a moment ago. And this looks like it's gonna be instant. There it is. All right, so let's disconnect the applied energistics and that'll just finish up what it's doing right now. Just whatever is left in the inventories here. Okay, very good. So we have 337 million blocks still left in here. We can eject those and get all of those back out. Yep, so we're not losing anything. And then we can take this apart and tear this all down. We'll leave this here for now, I think. Uh, probably, do you wanna throw a torch down on here? I'm not sure if that's all lit up properly or not. Uh, so now that we have this, guys, wand of animation, Marion Singularity and there, boom. Wand of animation. How long have we been working on this particular item? There it is. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so quest complete, wand of animation. Let's see where that is. Is that under this one? Oh, it is under this one. So this is another page completed. Very, very cool. So yeah, Lambda is now all done. I like it. What do we got here? Uh, advanced air compressor. Okay, so we did that from last episode, I think, for making the quantum compressor. What was this one right here? Ah, all of the different fluid storages that we needed. So we will claim those as well. And what's this one? Oh, the quantum compressor. I guess we never claimed that. All right. Ingots are replaced with blocks. Oh, okay. So I guess in the other modes, like Titan and normal mode, you put in ingots, but in Kappa mode, you put in full blocks to make the singularities interesting. Wow, look at all these different singularities here. Oh my goodness. Ah, what is this, an ultimate singularity? And that's, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna be making a lot of these singularities at some point in the future. That's gonna be, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the wand of animation, uh, our next step is we're gonna wanna take certain blocks like Mirian, for instance, we wanna animate it, and then we wanna capture that so we can respawn in the entity that is made from this guy. So, Let's do, what are those called, uh, mob imprisonment? So I don't have any extra ones here, so let's grab this, mob imprisonment, all right. And I think we're gonna contain this. Let's grab some glass real quick. <laughs> In my original playthrough of Project Ozone 2 Kappa Mood on live streams that I did, I don't know, three years ago or something, I had a big open platform. <laughs> Uh, because we're in the sky, right? It was just an open platform base and I animated my very first block right next to the edge of a platform and because of the way Project Ozone like increases movement speed of mobs and health of mobs and things like that the more like boss enemies you kill like as soon as I animated it, it just ran right off the edge like it was super speedy and it just like <laughs> zoomed right off the edge. It was the funniest thing ever. So anyway, I want to make sure we uh, capture this thing so it doesn't run away I don't know if this has got super speed on it or not, but let's give the first one a go. There it is, an animated block, and it doesn't look like it's trying to go anywhere. I don't know how much damage that thing does. I guess we could uh, let it poke us real quick. Let me grab some food here. Do you do a lot of damage? Hello? Do you not even, do you not see me? Are these things not hostile? I know they used to be hostile. Maybe it can't pathfind, so it doesn't know what to do. I don't know. Well, anyway, if it's not hostile, that's fine, but let's just go ahead and grab it. And what does it say? Mob imprisonment tool, Erebus animated block. Okay, so the thing is, it's gonna say animated block on there, but we have no idea what this item is. So I discovered, um, with the dark steel stuff, you could put in these anvils, right? Micro anvil, mini anvil, pocket anvil. And I, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what these do, but it gives you this button right here when you do a shift right click on like your dark bow, for instance. Yeah, so you can rename things in here. <laughs> uh, so let's do, get rid of that. And what is that, Mirian block? Yeah, I guess we'll just do that, that's fine. All right, we can just do Mirian like that, that's fine, okay. There we go. So now we know for sure what's in there without having to like, you know, place the mob in the world and figure that out on our own. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if using that anvil uses durability on the dark steel bow or not, but either way, that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. 
Anyway, so we have this, and the next thing is that we can put this into like some kind of a mob spawner. Now, I think we were doing that. Uh, oh, I used the wrong thing. That's fine. I think we were doing that downstairs for uh, spawning in the bunny. And I don't remember if I cleaned that up. I don't see it down here anymore. Yeah, I think it was over here. Well, I'm thinking the next thing we should do right now, let's just go ahead and get rid of this Marion world. We don't need this anymore. We have blocks. We have the animated version. We can always duplicate those going forward. But yeah, let's take a look at what we've done here since I haven't been here for a minute since the server has been running. Okay, so this didn't go out as far as I thought it was gonna go out. Huh. All right, well, you know, it has done some stuff here. Well, that's cool. Let's go ahead. We're gonna get rid of the chunk looting. We're gonna get rid of our builders. We'll reclaim all of that stuff. And then we will just depower this world. We no longer need this laggy dimension anymore. And then we always have this quantum tank full of a bunch of molten Mirian if we ever wanna do anything with that, I suppose. But yeah, we'll go ahead and get rid of this guy and these guys and all of this stuff. And then we're gonna depower this and get our EMC world back up and running. Okay, so we're gonna do this again, except this time we're actually gonna use something that is kind of valuable, this crystal time ingot stuff. Now that's gonna be used for making, uh, what are these called, the crystal matrix? Yeah, so this is why we originally wanted to make this wand of animation, so I didn't have to make each one of these ingots for each one of these ingots, and these crystal tine ones required us to make these aluminum crystal seeds plus the mana diamonds and uh, the plenary crystals and osmium and all this other nonsense, right? So we want to be able to just spawn this stuff in. Now this is one of the few ingots that you can just turn directly into a block. So we're going to do that. So there's a block of this stuff and we are going to animate this as well. And I put that away into here. Okay. So we'll animate this block and then we will grab it in a brand new mob imprisonment tool. All right, and that is called the Crystal Teen or Crystal Tine or however you pronounce it, I don't actually know. Uh, we'll put it back in here and then again, we'll, we'll rename this Crystal Teen, Crystal Tine, I don't know, something like that. So now we know what is in here, awesome. Okay, so now that we have that, we can come downstairs and I did set up a little area here that we can do an experiment. Oh, I didn't light this up. That's not a regular pig, that's a hostile pig. <laughs> Can I put a torch? There we go. Okay, so the way this is set up, we just have the mob duplicator here. We have the energy and the speed upgrades, right? On top of that, we are giving it power, and then from the side, we are giving it the essence. I haven't tried this yet, but by default, if we show the working area, it does two blocks above and two blocks below the spawner, and I'm hoping with like stuff on these blocks, it's only ever gonna spawn them down below, but I might need to put a glass block or something right here. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but we'll find out. Now, of course, we can also like extend out the range and make it bigger and try and get multiple spawns at once. Um, but for right now, just for testing purposes, let's do this. And then also we're gonna want a way to collect the item. So let's grab a chest, I guess, plus an item collector. Yeah, that should be fine. We'll just throw that right here with the item collector on there, okay. So now we should be pretty much good to go. Let's put this into here. We want exact copy. Let's try it without the exact copy, first of all. Whoop. Okay, so it is spawning in just stone, I guess. Oh, my magnet's on. Yeah, so we're getting stone and solidified experience. All right, all right. So exact copy on. Oh, look at that. So what, yeah, we are getting them spawning up here. I was afraid of that. <laughs> All right, I need to turn this back off, I suppose, so it stops spawning these guys in. I don't want these everywhere. Now, since you have a place to pathfind, are you going to attack me? Oh, I guess these are not hostile. It seemed like in Project Ozone 2, these were always hostile. But I guess that has changed. Uh, so it looks like when I kill them with my looting sword, we aren't getting anything more than just the one single block, right? We have none... And then we just have, I guess that stone's going into here so we can't see it. All right, so yeah, we're only getting one. So looting doesn't really affect these. It's just the amount of spawns that we have that's going to affect this. So uh, we learned that it can in fact spawn at the very top. So if we put a piece of glass up there or something, that should prevent it. Do that, do that. We can place a torch back on there, I guess. 
Uh, so that should prevent any spawns up top. So I guess we can throw that back in here. So yeah, the only place mobs are going to spawn is directly into here. We will collect the items. Yeah, so we want to scale this up and get the most amount of mobs spawning at once, right? Also, we only have a limited amount of this essence. So we're going to have to figure out how to get more of that. Maybe we can make an essence world and like, you know, fill up a quantum drum full of stuff. Or we're also collecting experience. Like we have buckets on buckets of experience that or dictionaries into essence. Make sure my magnets off here. So currently we have uh 159,000 buckets of xp 1350 levels worth yeah so we got a lot of that that's what we've been collecting through the entire series i'm not sure if we want to use that for this particular purpose or not but it is a thing that we could do well anyway we are now collecting the blocks of crystal time and then those if we wanted to unblockify them we can put them into a factorizer to split so that's something that we're gonna have to do cool well, this is looking really, really promising. Thinking about how we're gonna scale this up, I feel like we're already doing something similar to what I wanna do. So our two slime chunks here, we are moving the slimes over into a portal and then warping them up to where we want them to be killed, right? So we could do something similar, sandwich these mob duplicators in between these portal blocks here, right? So as soon as a mob spawn, they either spawn inside the portal or they fall into the portal and then they get warped into our killing area here. So this is like our vanilla mob spawning, mob spawner killer item sorter thing, right? So hostile mobs spawn in here, the vector plates move them all to the center and they get killed by the mob crusher right there. And that includes looting and sharpness and all this stuff so they die really fast. So if we warp the mobs, like these blocks, into this general area, they'll fall down and then they'll just get over there and get killed immediately. And then all we gotta do is just add a, another uh, barrel over here for that particular type. And I think that's gonna work rather well. Now the only thing is, I was looking at the draconic blocks that we have, these draconic infused obsidian. We don't have a whole lot of these. So this might be the first thing that we're gonna wanna spawn in. So we can duplicate a bunch of these things. Um, actually, I didn't even look at the recipe. Are these cheap enough that we can just make? The recipe for those is obsidian, which I think the vanilla obsidian has EMC. The draconic dust does not, I don't think. And the blaze powder does. So yeah, I think it probably just makes sense to spawn in a whole bunch of these for what we want to do here. Um, so yeah, we're going to be making large size portals. Probably, I, th I think this thing... The mob duplicator, I'm not sure what the size is. Like, can you put all the way up to like a 13 by 13 in there? Uh, we'll probably make it a more reasonable size. We'll probably keep it like the nine by nine, like the standard vanilla spawners. And then we'll just sandwich those on top of each other. So it'll be like spawner, portal, spawner, portal, like that. Um, so like they can use the same spawning space as the other ones and then all go into the same portals. So I think we're gonna, or we might just like do a complete stack of mob duplicators in like a column and have them all fall into a portal at the bottom. I haven't really decided what I want to do yet, but uh, I do want them going into here and being uh, killed using our mob crusher over here. So I'm gonna start working on that process. Well, I guess what I want to do before I start building anything is just verify if we make this like the maximum size and then we spawn in these mobs using exact copy mm -hmm. are we going to get more than one at a time or are we only ever going to get one okay so we got four and it should spawn in more so we get four at a time and it seems like they're all pretty much that one only did one okay so it looks like a maximum of four yeah i think we're probably going to want the maximum spawning area here right yeah, I think that's what we're gonna wanna do. Okay, well, we figured that out. Let's go ahead and make a thing so we can start making a whole bunch more of this draconium infused obsidian. All right guys, so I went ahead and I placed the mob duplicator about where I want it to be. Well, I guess I placed this ring around where I want the ring to be. This is gonna be where our warpy thing is gonna be. Uh, I put this in the center with the maximum tier range add-on. So we can see how big the the area is going to spawn the monsters is going to be. Yeah, and I think now that we know the shape, the size, and the location, we can go ahead and swap that all out for the Draconium Infused Obsidian using this exchanging tool. 
and boom, there it is, awesome. Okay, so now that we have that in place, we'll go ahead and light this up so it's not spawning in monsters everywhere, which I'm pretty sure it would be. Uh, put these in the center and on the corners here. Very good, and then one more right there. Awesome. Okay, so I left this open because we have to have the receptacle where we're gonna put in the, the actual dislocator item. So I think this is gonna be pretty good. Now we can leave this either open air or fill it in with glass. We might fill it in with glass. I'm not actually sure what we're gonna do just yet, but we have this portion done. So if we wanted to do the dislocator receptacle, this guy requires a draconic core, draconium fused obsidian. We have all of that stuff. We can just do one of those very easily. Awesome. So this guy goes right here. And then all we need is the warpy thing to tell it where we're going to warp to, which I might put right above the, I haven't decided yet. I might put it right above this guy, turn that off for a moment and then like stand on top of it and then uh, set the location there. I don't know yet, but anyway, uh, we have this set. So I'm just going to do a little bit more building here and we'll be right back. Okay, so we should have everything all set up now. I did put a new item barrel here with an infinite upgrade with a crystal teen in there and locked it. And then I have a few more of these infinite capacity ones ready to go for later. Uh, over here is very dark, hard to see. I guess I can throw some torches in here. So we can see this a little bit easier maybe. And uh, place torches. I guess I'm gonna place them along this stuff here. So yeah, we just have dark glass on top of our portal frame here. Uh, nothing super special. And then I put some slabs on top of that since this is a spawnable block. It's not like regular glass. Uh, on top of our mob duplicator here, I have regular glass all the way up here. And I think what we're gonna end up doing is just replacing each one of these blocks of glass with another one of these mob duplicators, right? So each, yeah, each one of those glass should be able to contain a new duplicator in there. I didn't put any of the upgrades in. I probably should do that. So we want the range add-on on there. And I don't remember if it's the energy upgrades or the speed upgrades that we want. I think it's the energy upgrades and then the speed one speed upgrade. I'll have to double check on that. But yeah, if we look at the uh, working area here, that's all contained within. And it's one block above the portal. Maybe we could have put this down one more. So like if it spawned at this level, it spawned inside the portal and immediately get teleported. I'm not actually sure how that all works, but anyway, so I think this should be okay. And then we're using uh, the ender fluid conduit and energy conduit to give it power and the essence from up here. We still don't have a way to like renew our essence. That's something we're gonna have to work on here in the future. And then this is all set up uh, just the way it should be. Power set, yeah. Anyway, so I think we are ready to go to give this the first test. Let's get rid of these torches. Um, I did go and set a dislocator directly on top of our, what, what's the thing called? The mob crusher. So I myself do not want to ever get warped in there because I'm going to be standing right on top of that mob crusher and that's going to do a whole lot of damage. Like, I don't know how well our <laughs> armor will protect us, but it's not something I want to test out. Anyway, so we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and yeah, disable exact copy. We'll throw that in there. So we should be spawning in monsters. They're just gonna go into the void right now. And then we will put this right into there, which should warp them all inside. This is my, okay, so my magnet's off. So these guys are all being warped in here, which should be killed by our mob crusher. So if we look in this chest, we should see a bunch of stuff coming in, which is great. One weight concrete. Yeah, so all those blocks should be ending up here. That looks like we're doing some pretty good stuff. So in the future, when we get any sort of like really expensive block that we need duplicated, this is gonna be how we're gonna do it. Now it might be better if we had, I don't know, more mob crushers or we put this into a different location. I'm not really sure if this is the best setup for it, but yeah, the mobs being warped right on top of that mob crusher and all these vector plates are pushing them into it. So if they kind of like bounce off each other, they don't really have anywhere to go. So. I feel like this is gonna work pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, how are we doing on this? Like, are we using this at a pretty fast rate? Yeah, that's that's being used quite quickly. I probably should also put a redstone signal so I can just do a lever to turn these things off and on. Yeah, that's something that we'll have to do here in the future as well. I think for now, I'm just gonna come down here and remove this guy, just so we're not wasting all of our essence. 
on this crystal team that we don't need at this exact moment in time, but I'm sure we will need it in the future. So yeah, like I said, we can duplicate this draconium infused obsidian or pretty much any other block like the uh, crystal matrix. Once we make nine of those, we'll turn this in, turn this into its own block. And then we can duplicate that and never have to worry about this recipe, but that is going to have to wait until next time. Yep. We're out of time for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.